Hello, everyone, and welcome to Deep Dive with Duania. I am Duania Wilkerson, owner of Pros and Pens and contributing editor for the Scout Guide Huntsville. To kick off our Deep Dive series, we are interviewing Brandon Black of Black Lion Photography. Brandon, it is so nice to have you here this afternoon. Thank you for the invite. I really appreciate it. Yes, I'm excited to hear your responses to these questions. But before we get into the questions, would you mind telling us a little bit about your business? Absolutely. So like you said, my name is Brandon Black. I'm a uh, landscape and nightscape photographer, um, fine art photographer. So primarily my focus is landscapes, nature, uh, in the night sky. And so I print on a variety of mediums, metal, fine art, frame pieces. I do canvas. It's really whatever the client desires. Um, we can work with them hand in hand and, and create a product that they're happy with. Okay, sounds good, Brandon. So we are going to jump right into the first question, which is, tell us what led to your career in photography. So I've always taken pictures over the years, uh, vacations, I've always had a camera and it's always been something that's fascinated me. Um, but for the longest time, I never really took the time and energy to learn what to do with the photographs after I took them. And so it was more just a hobby and something I enjoyed doing. Um, about eight years ago, uh, a friend of mine who was also a photographer, we started talking and uh, he was talking about night photography, shooting the Milky Way and asked me if I wanted to come out to, to shoot with him. And I said, absolutely, uh, but I need to upgrade my equipment essentially. And so I uh, sold off all my old ancient equipment that was 20 years old and purchased some new digital uh, camera equipment. And then we went out shooting the night sky. And ever since then, I've been hooked and uh, I just can't get enough of it. OK, that sounds good. Now, may I ask, is the the piece behind you, is that one of your own? It is. That That's is, uh, yeah, it's called Sunrise at the Bells. It's from Colorado outside of Aspen, Maroon Bells area of Colorado. OK. So as you mentioned, you specialize in landscape and nightscape photography. How did you decide upon that niche? Because I, I don't think I've met anyone else who has a specialty in those areas. You know, it was that first first night going out with my friend all those years ago, shooting the night sky. And when you're sitting out under the stars and you can see the Milky Way through your naked eye and you just watch it move across the night sky and then the photograph it and to see the images on the back of your camera, it's really hard to explain. Um, for people who go out and see it for the first time, it's that kind of sense of awe, uh, realizing the old cliche that we're a lot smaller than, you know, little little tiny people here on this earth, this, this galaxy, and there's so much more beyond us. Uh, and it's just, it's an amazing experience to go out there and see that. And so from that point on, I was just kind of hooked, especially the night sky. But for me, going out in nature, getting away from the daily hustle, uh, you know, the grind of work, you know, everyone's got family and jobs and the errands to run and kids and everything else. So when I get a chance to go photograph, it's for me, it's an escape. I can shut off, disconnect, kind of recharge my batteries. And uh, it's just peaceful to me. And so that's just kind of I feel at home out in nature. OK. So one of the things that um, all business owners, I will say, are familiar with is finding who their audience, who their customer is. And um, most of us who have a very niche business, we have to really drill down and hone in on who that client is. So can you tell us a bit about who your target customer, your target audience is, and how do you go about finding those people? You're absolutely right. And then being what I do, the landscape photography and more so the nightscape photography, that is a very niche market and it takes a special client who can connect with that piece, right? It's someone who travels, gets out in nature, whether it be hiking or just vacations, um, maybe someone who's been to some of the locations I photographed and can make that connection with the memory they have. Um, but it's, you know, it's your art collector, someone who can appreciate fine art no matter what form that's in. Um, but also nature enthusiasts, uh, like I mentioned, travelers, but also interior designers, someone who's looking to either redo a home, office, whatever the case may be, um, try and connect with, with that end of the market as well to work hand in hand. 
So I don't I don't want to put creatives into a box, um, but sometimes creatives do have that struggle or try to find the balance between the art and the business. And so we have to find a thing that grounds us, particularly in the business part. So do you have a day-to-day -day business philosophy that you use to make sure that things are running smoothly or that you're staying on track or that you're just delivering in the way that you want to deliver? Not sure. Yeah, so it is a struggle. Um, so my other half, my wife, is my business partner in this venture, and so she runs the back end, uh, a lot of the, the books and keeping track of records and everything else like that. And we work hand-in-hand -hand that aspect that allows me to be the creative take the photographs um, and, and be out in public uh, making those connections. But for me, the biggest thing is, A, when I do get an opportunity to get out is just to reconnect, recharge my batteries so that I can focus on what I want to do uh, long term. Uh, B, it's the relationship. So for the last two and a half years, I've been working a lot of markets and events through the Huntsville area. And it's, it's you know, going out and meeting the people, meeting your, your clientele and uh, forming those relationships so that you see them six months down the road at another show, you, you can talk and have a conversation and reconnect. And so for me, I found the relationships is the biggest part of that. If I can build the relationships within the community, um, it keeps them coming back for more, which obviously as a, you know, with a niche market, you kind of need those repeat clients and that's, that's a big part of it. Um, but the other part I focus on is just continuing to learn and grow as a photographer, not just uh, for my own betterment, but, also for the workshops that I teach. Um, it's a big help if I can continue to learn and hone my craft and hone my skills uh, to then turn that around and provide to the students that I teach. You mentioned workshops just a moment ago. Would you like to tell us a little bit about those? Absolutely. So I offer a couple different versions. Um, I do one-on-one -on -one and small group workshops in which I'll go out in the field with uh, another photographer or a budding photographer or a small group, and we'll spend two or three hours out in the field going over things such as composition, camera settings, uh, thought processes, how to frame up your shot, uh, just things I look for when I'm out in the field and my thought process behind uh, photographing. And then on the back end of it, we'll do a usually a recorded Zoom session. Where we'll spend one to two hours working on post-processing of those images. And that could be something simple as they follow along with my edit of my photograph. I can work through one of the edits of their photographs or I can help them process one of their images. So it just really depends on what the clients are looking for. And I try and tailor every, every workshop to the specific client or clients. Um, so that's one part of it. And then the other part is just one-on-one -on -one Zoom sessions with post-processing, usually done an hour at a time. And so we'll sit down. Um, with every client, I usually have a phone call ahead of time and we'll discuss what are you looking for? Uh, how can I best help you? What are you strong in? What do you need help with? And we kind of form a game plan so that when we actually have that hour, we can hit the ground running and uh, not waste our time. And so we can focus on what that client specifically needs with post-processing work. What has been like one of your greatest failures and how you recover it from it, if you were able to, and then what has been one of your greatest wins? Sure. So, you know, it's a tough one to, to think about. And I've been photographing for eight years. I've been kind of in the public's, public eye as far as markets are concerned and being out in front of people for the last two and a half or so, two and a half, three years here in Huntsville. Um, but I would say my biggest, I guess we call it a failure, um, something I'm continually work on is taking opportunities when they come, um, having people come forward and, and propose potential ideas or projects that we can collaborate on. And I've usually left it in their their hands to reach out afterwards and make, you know, further that that collaboration. And that's usually come back to bite me. And so lately I've been really trying to focus on taking the initiative. Uh, when something presents it to, you know, itself to me, if it's if it's of interest and could help the business, then uh, me taking a, a more forward approach and trying to uh, instigate that collaboration more so than now. And so I say that's one of my biggest drawbacks is that continually trying to work on that when I when things come across my plate, if it's advantageous to the business to go ahead and jump on it and, and be more proactive. Um, and then as far as greatest wins, I mean, honestly, 
I think for me, it's seeing people purchase my work, especially larger pieces like the one behind me and being genuinely happy and having it in their homes and excited to have it in their homes and share it with their friends and family. That to me is probably the biggest win. Just knowing the validation of, hey, my artwork does have a place. Um, Because that's always one of the biggest lessons I learned is no matter what you're doing, your art needs to sell in order to justify what it is you're doing uh, in terms of business purposes. And so for me, the fact that my art does sell justifies everything I've been working on for the stuff, you know, last eight years and uh, just continues to push me to continue. So if you could wave a wand and have those black lion dreams come true, what would that look like? Well, so long term, I want to be traveling and doing workshops. Um, essentially having people pay to attend my workshops no matter where it is in the world. Um, there's so many beautiful places in this in this world that uh, I enjoy traveling to and photographing. And I think if I could host workshops in those locations, uh, that is my end goal. I love teaching. I love helping people succeed. And so it's always been a passion of mine. And so long term for the business, uh, I do want to run workshops throughout the year uh, and, and kind of push photography out there to, to the masses and, and help them learn and become better photographers and achieve their goals in that, in that realm. Um, aside from the, that end of things, I mean, I'd love for my work to be in galleries across the country, um, to be, you say, black land photography, and I'm known for my night sky and my landscape photography. And that's, you know, it's just, it's just kind of like around here, like I've started to create that little niche, um, where people know to come find me for certain, certain images they're looking for. And so just to build that and expand it. Next to last question, because I have a surprise edition. <laughs> what are you looking forward to in the next six to 12 months? I got a few trips planned. Um, I leave next week for three weeks to Switzerland. And so part vacation, but part photography trip. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that to get away with the family and uh, kind of disconnect and recharge the batteries. Um, but as soon as I'm done with that trip, I'm heading out to Colorado for a week. I'm helping out uh, two fellow photographers. I run a workshop at the San Juan Mountains of Colorado. Be shooting wildflowers in the uh, Milky Way for a week. Um, and when I get back from that, uh, I got another trip to shoot fall colors in Colorado uh, later this year, end of September. So um, got those trips lined up that I'm really looking forward to. It gives me a chance to, like I said, disconnect, recharge the batteries, and uh, obtain some new new images to some places that I'm not too familiar with yet. Um, but other than that, I'm just, really, it's just had a baby girl a few months ago. So I'm uh, enjoying dad life. And uh, that's taking up a lot of my time right now. And I wouldn't have any other way. So that's probably what I'm most looking forward to in the next six to 12, 12 months. Okay. Well, congratulations on the Thank new you. baby girl. Thank you. And my last question is, what advice do you have for photographers who are maybe just starting out or they are looking to take their skills to the next level? Maybe they maybe photography is a hobby right now and they want to one day make a full time career of it. What advice do you have for drilling down, getting started and making that happen? I say first and foremost, learn your equipment know how to operate in all the conditions you want to photograph in, um, but B, educate yourself. There's so many resources online that are free. Um, that's how I started a lot of my photography journey was educate myself through YouTube videos and online tutorials. And um, that was hands down one of the biggest things that kind of helped push me along initially. Um, but aside from that, I'd, I'd recommend taking workshops. I mean, it doesn't have to be from me, it could be from anybody, but take a variety of different workshops from a variety of different photographers because you're going to get something different from every single person. Everyone sees things differently. Everyone's thought process is a little bit different. Their post-processing could be a little bit different. You're going to pick up tips, tricks, techniques, whatever it is um, from each different photographer, and that's invaluable. And uh, I've tried to do that over the years and, and work hand-in-hand -hand with others, and uh, that's always been great for me in my personal opinion. Thank you, Brandon. And that concludes our deep dive questions. Um, Brandon, could you please let those who are listening and or watching know how they can get in touch with you? 
Absolutely. So first and foremost, I'm on social media, uh, Instagram, it's at black lion underscore photography underscore, uh, on Facebook, you can find me at black lion photography and our website is www.blacklion.photography. And then you can always send me an email and that's, uh, at black lion photographer at gmail.com. Thank you so much again, Brandon, Thank you, for speaking off this series with us and, um, providing some insight into your business and into um, other photo photography hopefuls. So thank you again. And I look forward to seeing you around. Thanks, Duane. I appreciate it. Take care.